I am Tulika Banerjee. Today, I bring you the next learning episode on an important unit of the paper titled Fingerprints, that is, Digital Imaging of Fingerprints. In this lecture, you will be studying about digital imaging of fingerprints, image format and fingerprint imaging using CCD camera. In addition to it, you will also be told about steps of image enhancement technique and fingerprint image enhancement by MATLAB. We will wind up this lecture with a conclusion. So let us start our today's lecture with introduction. One of the important types of physical evidence that readily helps in identification is the use of fingerprints. Fingerprints of humans are employed as identification marks during fingerprint comparison based on the details present in them which are also known as minutiae. But the mere identification of these prints does not serve the whole purpose because certain development procedures are also needed for their enhancement and so that more clarity is obtained pertaining to these latent prints. The latent prints can be deposited on objects or surfaces with unique characteristics such as wet surfaces, surfaces with multicolored backgrounds, surfaces contaminated with blood or other body fluids, objects with unusual shapes or contours, waxed surfaces, fabrics or untreated wood, varnished surfaces, human skin, cardboard boxes and other porous or non-absorbent surfaces. Under these conditions, traditional methods of latent print detection are often ineffective. Earlier, the common techniques employed for the latent fingerprint development were the conventional powder dusting method, spraying the print with ninhydrin reagent, iodine fuming and sulfonitrate method. However, these conventional techniques are only effective during the recovery of latent prints in ordinary circumstances. It should also be noted that the application of wrong technique employed for the detection of latent prints may even result in the destruction, thereby reducing its evidentiary value. The fingerprint scientists have tried to invent new techniques or methods for the development and visualization of these prints. After the latent prints have been developed, there is a need of various enhancement techniques so that the ridges can be clearly studied. As early as 1937, scientists suggested that alternative light sources other than room light could be used for the enhancement and visualization of latent fingerprints. High intensity lamps, UV light sources, lasers and xenon arc lamps have been utilized in the development of latent prints and have produced better latent print images than regular room light. Before the evaluation of fingerprints is done, pre-processing and binarization of the latent prints is carried out so as to achieve good extraction of minutiae in fingerprints with varying quality. Image enhancement of fingerprints is done so that the image becomes clearer for supplementary operations. Also, the images of fingerprints acquired from a scanner or any other media are not assured with perfect quality. Those enhancement methods for increasing the contrast between ridges and valleys are for connecting the false broken points of ridges due to insufficient amount of ink are very useful for keeping a higher accuracy to fingerprint recognition. The following are the basics of image processing for fingerprints. First, make sure you understand what a fingerprint is. It is basically a signature for every human being. Every finger on each hand on every person, even twins, has unique patterns. These patterns are of major interest. These patterns are classified into categories such as deltas, cores, etc. You must understand what valleys, ridges, bifurcations, etc. are. Once you understand the minutiae characters and a bit more, you go on to fingerprint acquisition. Once you have an image, the interesting and difficult part begins, such as segmentation, 
enhancement of certain patterns, noise reduction and finally encoding. The encoding part is the penultimate part. When you have a filtered or processed image, you create a digital signature which is called as encoding. The signature is what the whole fingerprint ended up in. In the next step, more of digital signatures are formed for other images. After this, comparisons of these images are done so that you may figure out the matches between them. Matching itself is another story where you will try to see false matches and true matches. Next year students, we will be discussing here about the image format. Usually the fingerprints that are found on crime scenes are not in perfect condition and this poses a problem that makes the analysis more difficult. Today, computers are being used in almost every field of advanced technologies and therefore fingerprint science hasn't been left behind. Hence, these latent prints can further be enhanced with the help of digital imaging software so as to achieve more clearer picture and that can be employed for the most inclusive and precise examination. Next is about pixels and bitmaps. Pixels in a digital image represent the short picture elements or one can also say that image is composed of large number of pixels. It is a small dot of a specific color wherein each pixel represents the color or the gray levels for black and white photos. By measuring the color of an image at a large number of points, we can create a digital approximation of the image from which a copy of the original can be reconstructed. In case of a conventional photographic image, the pixels are grain-like particles that are arranged in a regular array of rows and columns and thus store information somewhat differently. A bitmap can also be defined as the rectangular arrangement of pixels. Next is types of digital images. For photographic purposes, there are two important types of digital images that is color and black and white. In case of colored images, color pixels are found whereas in case of black and white images, they are formed from pixels having various shades of grey. First take up the black and white images. A black and white image is made up of pixels each of which holds a single number corresponding to the grey level of the image at a particular location. The grey levels in case of black and white images spans the complete range starting from black and moving to white in a series of steps that is usually 256 various shades of grey or grey shades. Also, this is sufficient to provide the human eye with the illusion of a stepless tonal scale as the human eye can hardly differentiate between 200 various shades of grey. So on considering the 256 grey levels, each black and white pixel can be put in the form of 8 bits of memory or in a single byte. Next are the color images. A colored image is formed from pixels each holding three numbers analogous to red, green and blue levels of the image at a particular location. The primary colors for mixing light that is red, blue, green also abbreviated as RGB colors or the additive primary colors are different from the primary colors used for mixing paints such as cyan, magenta and yellow. Therefore, by mixing the specific amounts of red, blue and green light, any color can be formed. Also, by taking into consideration the 256 levels for each of the primary colors, the colored pixels can be stored in 24 bytes or 3 bytes of memory. So, this combination matches up to approximately 16.7 million various possible colors. But in case the images are of same size, a black and white version will use three times less memory than a color version. Next are the binary or bi-level images. In case of binary or bi-level images, only a single bit is employed to represent a single pixel. Each pixel in case of a binary image must be one of the two colors that is black or white as a single bit can exist only in two states that is either on 
or of state. The intermediate shades of grey are not represented and this is the limitation and affects their usefulness while dealing with photographic images. Next is the indexed color images. Generally by employing 256 various colors, the colored images can be created using a limited palette of colors. Therefore, these colored images are denoted to as indexed color images. Since the data for each pixel consists of a palette index indicating which of the colors in the palette applies to that pixel. There are several problems with using indexed color to represent photographic images. First, if the image comprises of various colors than which are present in the palette, methods such as dithering should be employed so as to represent the missing colors and this degrades the image. Second, combining two indexed color images that are used differently on different palettes or even retouching part of a single indexed color image creates problems because of the limited number of available colors. Next is resolution. More details of the image can be captured if we sample the image at more points by measuring its color. Resolution is defined as the density of pixels in an image. The image will contain more information if it has higher resolution. If we keep the image size same and increase the resolution, the image gets sharper and more detailed. Alternatively, with a higher resolution image, we can produce a larger image with the same amount of detailing or detail. Next, we will be discussing about here the fingerprint imaging using CCD camera. EMIScope is a 12-bit 4096 levels of grey CCD camera for C-mount lenses and our dual filter slide assembly. The CCD control is integrated in the ImmaQuest software including manual exposure time, auto exposure and video or high resolution digital mode. Print scope is a portable digital camera with all filters and optics to capture body fluid stains or fingerprints and packaged with three options for software that is CDIS. Crime scope digital imaging systems includes all the hardware, optics and software packages to be used with one of the forensic light sources. ImmaQuest fingerprint or palm print processing solution allows the removal of fluorescent backgrounds, boosts prints and removes periodic backgrounds with FFT and features a broad range of digital filters to process the print. The system keeps a check to all the changes that have been made automatically and shows an exceptional format that records the mathematical treatments done to the image and also the original image. An IndentQuest sample set that is IndentQuest is a module included in ImmaQuest and features automated extraction of minutiae and manual selection of points and features on two prints side by side. This technique also allows proper scanning of the reference prints from the 10 digit fingerprint card and hence will digitally compare the images. Next is about the steps of image enhancement technique. At first, the fingerprint enhancement step was carried out with the help of canny edge detector. But when used, it turned out that the results given by this detector was an image of the print with their ridges highlighted. In case the edge detection is being employed, it will need an additional step so as to fill out the shapes that will consume more processing time and hence will also escalate the complexity of the code. The image enhancement technique involves two steps. Firstly, the histogram equalization and secondly, the Fourier transformation. First here we will be discussing about the histogram equalization. In case of histogram equalization, the value of pixel distribution of the image is expanded so that there is an increase in the perceptional information. The first figure shown on your screen is the original histogram of the fingerprint image and the second figure shown on your screen is of the histogram equalization. Next is Fourier transform. 
or Fourier transformation. In this, the obtained image is divided into small sized processing blocks of 32 into 32 pixels and then carries out the Fourier transformation. If a particular block needs to be enhanced by its dominant frequencies, the FFT of the block is multiplied by its magnitude a set of times. Next here we will be discussing about the fingerprint image enhancement by MATLAB. The power that MATLAB brings to digital image processing is an extensive set of functions for processing multi-dimensional arrays of which images that is the two dimensional numerical arrays are a special case. It has various features which are capable of the MATLAB numeric computing environment. The expressiveness and functions pertaining to the MATLAB language makes the operations required for image processing easy to be written in a clear and compact form, thereby acting as a best software prototyping environment. Digital image representation. The image is defined as a 2D representation of function f x y where x and y are the spatial or plane coordinates and the amplitude of f at any pair of coordinates is known as the intensity of the image at that point. In accordance with the coordinates of x and y and also the amplitude, the image can be said to be continuous. Both the coordinates as well as the amplitude needs to be digitized for converting an image into a digital format. Sampling is the method where the coordinate values are digitized whereas quantization is the method of digitizing the amplitude values. An image is said to be digitized if the coordinates x and y and the amplitude values of f are finite and discrete in quantity. Next are the coordinate conventions. The result obtained from sampling and quantization is a matrix of real numbers. Digital images are represented by two principal ways. The image fxy is said to be sampled if it contains m rows and n columns. The values of the coordinates are discrete quantities. The coordinates are referred to as pixel coordinates in image processing toolbox documentation. Less often, the toolbox uses another coordinate system known as the spatial coordinates, which employs x to denote columns and y to denote rows. This is opposite to our usage of variables such as x and y. Many MATLAB functions do use the toolbox's spatial coordinate system with one encountering it in the toolbox and MATLAB documentation, but many do not use the system. The terms matrix and array are used interchangeably by MATLAB documentation. Nevertheless, it has to be kept in mind that a matrix is 2D and whereas an array can have any finite dimension. Fingerprints found at the scene of crime are collected for comparison purposes. But before the collection of this evidence, it is developed by physical and chemical methods. The development procedure makes the latent print visible. These colored prints are then photographed for comparison purposes, but the quality obtained is not very good in most of the cases and that is why they need to be digitally enhanced. A digital enhancement procedure requires the use of softwares and techniques that will provide clarity to the rich details, thereby helping in comparison. With all these information, here we come to the end of today's lecture. Do keep in mind what we have discussed today. I will be back with one more lecture in this series. If you want to learn more and enhance your knowledge, you may log on to our website www.cec.nic.in for MCQ, quizzes, LORs, etc. Thank you for your time today. I will see you in the next lecture. Have a great day.